there's Delbert Grady stuff, the, the conversation in the, the red bathroom. Come on, that stuff is just amazing. Amazing, and I don't know why Stephen King needed it. Hi guys, and welcome to Stephen King Cemetery Club. Hi guys, welcome to the Haunted Valley. When I think of The Shining, the definitive movie version, I think of the 1980 Stanley Kubrick classic masterpiece. And I had intended to do a little discussion about the 1980 movie and then also a discussion about the 1997 miniseries. But I I kept postponing it because I didn't really want to rewatch the miniseries right now. I watched it when it aired and I don't remember what I thought about it. And then recently, I mean recent being like five or six years ago, I bought the, I think it's called the Trilogy of Terror and it has the Salem's Lot miniseries that was remade with Rob Lowe and Donald Sutherland and The Shining, the 1997 Shining and the original It miniseries. So I bought this set because I just wanted to have them but I didn't want to spend a lot of money. The only one that I absolutely adore is It. So the last time I saw the 1997 miniseries would have been, you know, five or six years ago and I <laughs> don't honestly remember what I think of it yet again. So I was going to watch it and make another little discussion about it, but it's so long. The fact that I don't remember so much about it and I've seen it at least two times, maybe three, that kind of says something about it, I think. Now the actual original Shining movie I would watch whenever. I don't know why Stephen King hates it so much. I was thinking about this and it is such a, it's, it's, it's an amazing film. The cinematography, the overlook itself, the actors and actresses, everything is so visually pleasing and well thought out. I can't think of bad things to say about this movie. I just can't. And I know that a lot of things got changed. Um, I believe Stephen King had a problem with with Jack Torrance being portrayed by Jack Nicholson because Nicholson is kind of a not a crazy he he's not as um boring and dull I guess as Stephen King had anticipated and so in the miniseries he cast Stephen Weber who is very dull. I remember watching Wings with my parents and you know he's neither here nor there I just he's the dude from Wings to me. I don't even know the kid who um who played Danny in the miniseries. I don't remember his name but that kid drove me crazy. That much I do remember about the miniseries. I do not like that kid. And that could be some of why I'm not really itching to rewatch it right now. I don't think the 1997 version was an improvement at all over the original. Here's my mini discussion for the 1980 version of The Shining. I think it is amazing. I love all of the actors. Um, Jack Nicholson, that was one of my first movies that I actually saw him in and I just love him. I love his character. His eyebrow I was obsessed with his eyebrows and just his, his expressions. And I thought he brought so much to the role. He has so many quotable lines in there. He is just, to me, the perfect Jack Torrance. Uh, Shelley Vall, she is excellent as Wendy. She is properly terrified and concerned about her son and kind of cowed by Jack and I think their dynamic worked 
well for for the movie. Scatman Crothers. Love him so much. He just is so warm and tender and I I just think he was excellent as an older grandfatherly type person who was worried about Danny and wants to help him out. Danny Lloyd as Danny Torrance. He's, he was a great child actor. He didn't overact. He didn't... Sometimes child actors just they can't act and I feel like he did a lot of emoting without dialogue but that's difficult and I thought he did a great job. So just that core group of people and then the, the scenery, like I've discussed, the scenery, the set design, the creepiness of the hotel, all of it is just perfect. Just perfect. It is a masterpiece and I cannot recommend it enough. If you have not seen it, why? Why have you not seen this movie? Next week starts the first Bachman book. So I will see you next week for that. Have a sweet day. There are no hedge animals between the hedge maze, which I think is brilliant. You know, I mean, how are they going to do the hedge animal scenes? I just... Some things don't translate to the movies, and especially, you know, way back when, you had you to work with what you could manage and manage successfully. That's the other thing. Like, yeah, maybe they could have rigged up some sort of robot hedge thingy, but was it going to be scary? You know, was it going to have the right look to it?